Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Diego Bermudez Tropical Thermal Shock Natural Fermentation Processed Columbia from Archetype Coffee. And there's a bag right there. And Archetype, based out of Omaha, Nebraska. And this is our first ever full bag review of one of Archetype's coffees, having previously mentioned them in our most recent coffee roaster tier list as a coffee roaster that I had pretty extensive familiarity with. However, it has been a number of years since I've last had one of Archetype's coffees. So when I received an email advertising this coffee, it definitely caught my interest and felt like the perfect opportunity to finally getting around to reviewing one of Archetype's coffees as this is a Diego Bermudez coffee. And the Diego Bermudez coffees have gotten a pretty notable reputation in the coffee world over the past several years. And this is one I have pretty extensive familiarity with as well. So it's one I'm definitely looking forward to discussing as this right here is day 30. And recipe we went with for this coffee was a 16.67 to 1 water to coffee ratio brewed at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this one best through the Chemex, which indicates a more medium grind. Archetype, traditionally, they roast on the lighter side of American coffee roasters, so I'll call this a light American for the roast profile. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 10, first impression, and the aroma of the beans themselves yielded a very wild funkiness. So a little bit of background and a little bit of context into this. So it was about three years ago, maybe a little longer at this point, where I purchased a set from Black and White, which was their Paraiso coffees. And those coffees were some of the most wildly funky coffees I had ever had, and they still left such an impression that I remembered them to this point. And it's that kind of wild funkiness that's reminiscent of, well, moldy fruit, or I've heard it described as blue cheese, but it's got this kind of moldy sense to it. And it's very strong in the aroma. Just from opening the bag itself, I could kind of tell that it was very much present in this coffee. But it also yielded a fair bit of that funkiness in the cup itself, skewing heavily on the tropical fruit side of that funkiness. Not necessarily the most ideal start. I did not like those black and white coffees. In fact, one of those was probably my least favorite coffee that I have ever had due to the fact that it was just so wildly funky and out there and I was experiencing that from this first impression. Day 13. Cup definitely still yielding that wild funkiness in the aroma, but it's better balanced in the Chemex as it comes out a little cleaner. The tropical fruit is reminiscent yet again, this time of a, well, what I would describe as a smoothie. So they have strawberry banana on here. Yes, very much kind of like this strawberry banana smoothie, but this was much better and the Chemex really cleaned up so much of that funkiness within this coffee, especially on that second try. And while we're on the topic, uh, this coffee is actually, I believe it might be the same one as the one we reviewed from Kawa earlier this year. Another Paraiso coffee and those Paraiso coffees as mentioned are super funky and wild. So here we are, better experience. We continue on to day 16 as there's a little less of the funkiness and just an overall increase in the vibrancy within the cup. So that was something I noticed was it needed a couple of days to kind of cool off that really heavy funkiness. And at this time we're getting much more of the wildly tropical fruit. Plenty of that strawberry banana and yet again, very sugary in general, skewing a little bit on that sugary stone fruit on this day. So better day, we continue on to day 18. As the funkiness remains in the cup itself, especially when brewed through the V60, there's no getting around the funkiness. It is very distinct in the aroma too, but if you can kind of get past that, oftentimes if you maybe ignore the aroma of a cup of coffee, which is kind of a wild thing to say, it gets better. It's decreasing. There's still a fair bit of it within the cup itself vibrant fruit aspects pronounced yet again. We're probably going to continue harping on the funkiness because it is very distinct in this cup. Day 21 ran it through the Chemex and best day of the coffee to this point. Yet again, much cleaner, much more focused than previously expected. I would say that this was probably a standout day for this coffee as it's quite reminiscent yet again of the strawberry banana smoothie. Again, ignoring the aroma within the cup itself, within the brew, and just kind of sipping it without trying to take in much of that aroma, you get a lot less of the funkiness in it. Day 23, cup continues to improve a little bit though, as it's not quite as clean and focused in the V60, but the funkiness is less present on this day as well. So I found a nice little window, probably between day 16 and day 25, where I was seeing significantly less of the funkiness. This was another experience of that, as the cup does have so much of that vibrant and lasting finish within the cup itself. Day 25, not quite as good as on this day, there was much more of this alcoholic fermented component. I think they have a Mai Tai listed on here. I think that's an alcoholic drink. Again, don't drink much. So I could feel the alcoholic component much more on this day. I'd never felt it before. 
So it went funky and then kind of moderately clean and then a little boozy. So probably hitting on those two less clean aspects that I don't particularly enjoy in coffee. Significantly more boozy on this day though. Reminded me a lot of a tropical nectar, very heavy in this sense. And I didn't particularly like it as the entire cup as a whole felt much more heavy. So pretty heavy on those berries, which is something I really don't like in coffee in general. And day 28, our final day, cup continues skewing in the boozy direction at this point. And I was noticing a lot more in the V60. So here we have this final day, brewed to the Chemex and it's a lot more clean, less of the booziness, not as much of the funkiness. And it's just kind of this really heavy lasting cup in general on this day, but really kind of toning down those temperatures. That's why it's such a diluted recipe. This is one of the most diluted recipes I come up with for coffees significantly lower temperature and a uh, significantly more diluted cup in general. It does tone down both the boozy aspects as well as the really wild, funky, fermenty aspects within the cup of coffee. And the cup's vibrant enough on its own that you don't really need to ramp those things up if you really want to. If you're really enjoying it, then feel free, but uh, not necessarily my favorite aspect of this coffee. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. All right, two level fives. So let's go through those real quick. The finished level five, that's not in the slightest bit surprising. This is a very heavy and strong cup of coffee from the get-go. There's no point where this cup of coffee isn't something that you're feeling for a very long time. The aroma of the coffee itself, is just from the grounds, just from the brew, can be smelled for a while after it's actually been brewed. So very lasting coffee. Berry fruit, level five, not shocking in any sense. This strawberry banana smoothie sort of aspect to this coffee, very much present throughout the time drinking it, very strong within the cup itself. It got heavier on the later days, but even on its cleaner days, it was so distinct that it definitely justified that higher level, well, the level five mark in general. A bunch of level fours, sweetness level four. With all of that being said, it doesn't necessarily come out as overbearingly sweet. It's a very sweet cup, higher side of the level four, definitely feel it there. Acidity, it's a pretty acidic cup of coffee as well, and I really wanted to tone that down as well. So again, the really diluted recipe worked well to kind of tone that down. Otherwise, it could be even higher than that level four mark. Pretty acidic in that sense. And then the other two fruit marks actually still score level four. So the stone fruits, as kind of mentioned, it reminds me a lot of the previous Paris of coffees I had had, or that really sugary, funky stone fruit. And I would say that that's actually the most distinct, funky aspect I'm getting of it. I kind of hate to say it this way. Reminds me a little bit of maybe a moldy mango in a sense. So that's on the higher end. And then the citrus fruit, there's plenty of citrus in this cup of coffee as well. So definitely on the higher side, also hits that level four mark. And then you get a little bit of everything else in this cup as well. Not too much cleanliness, that's not really surprising. You're either getting funkiness or you're getting booziness. And even on its best days, it's still at best level three, lower side of the level three, but throughout the time drinking this coffee, level two seems fair. It is what it is. I mean, it's one of these coffees that are experimentally processed and they tend to not necessarily be the cleanest. And I'm not sure that there's too much else worth discussing. I feel like this is a pretty accurate representation. You're saying that this tasting wheel skews pretty heavily in specific directions, and that's because this coffee as a whole skews pretty strong in a lot of flavorful directions. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. I really need to kind of compare it side by side to a lot of the previous Pariso coffees I've had, as I feel like this is an improvement. I'm seeing an improvement in these Pariso coffees over the years, as that one I had from Black and White a number of years ago. Oh, as mentioned, probably my least favorite coffee I think I've ever had, like an entire bag of. I had such a hard time getting through that coffee. And then having the Kawa one more recently, I didn't like it by the end. Same thing with this one. It got too much by the end, but I can see much more positives in this one than I had seen from the previous Pariso ones I had had. So I feel like we're moving in the right direction. I feel like maybe Archetype did a slightly better version with this coffee. However, early days funkiness, late days booziness, not my cup of coffee in any sense. And uh, I don't know if I can really take much away from this review other than the fact that I'm still struggling with these really interesting Pariso coffees in general. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, uh, think 10 out of 10 wild. Think your most wild out there coffees. This one has this in abundance. It is, it is really dominant in the flavors, very unique. And if you've had these previous Pariso coffees, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This one's a very heavy and interesting drink in general. You're gonna be drinking and consuming a lot of interesting flavors within it. Very strong and flavorful fruits, and it's gonna come at the cost of the cleanliness, but that might make it much more fun for you. Some people might like it. 
but I think for the most part, I'll leave this review at that. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Diego Bermudez Tropical Thermal Shock Natural Fermentation Processed Columbia from Archetype Coffee. Thank you for watching.